Welcome to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today in my swing studio, and today's video is about how to generate some real speed, but still keep a body release. Stay tuned to find out more. As mentioned, today's video is all gonna be about the body release, but how we can start to generate some real speed and power from there. So there's a question I get quite a lot, and it's followed up from a couple of the videos I've done talking about the body release rather than the hands and arms. So when we're talking about the release, we're talking about squaring the club face at impact. So the club face is rotating from open to square to closed here, and it's working on an arc. And we can try and do that and control it with the hands and arms, and we can generate some speed from there but it's very hard to control the club face. So I much more prefer to see the big muscles controlling this movement and my arms are a little bit more passive. Now, uh, the question I get is generally goes along the lines of, I really like the videos. I feel like I can generate some, some real consistency from there, hit very straight shots, but I struggle with speed and power. So people wondering how they can generate power and still keep a body release. So I'm gonna try and give you a couple of ways. I'm gonna start by using the same impact ball I used in one of my videos. This is titled, uh, The Body Release, Not The Hands. And it's just an impact ball, which is almost like a sponge kid's football. It's just gonna go between my forearms and I'm gonna try and rotate, keeping this between my forearms. So this is really stopping me using my hands and arms and becoming more of a rotational part with my hips and with my torso rather than a hands and arms where I'm more likely to be dropping, losing the ball, losing the connection because it's more of a hands and arms action. So I'm going to start by hitting a shot. I'm only going to be able to make sort of a half, three quarter type of movement, keeping this ball in place. But see how much speed, how much uh, distance I get with a six iron that I've got here working on a pure body rotation. It's a little awkward with this, this ball, but it definitely gets you the feeling of it. So let's just try and hit one with this. Okay, that felt really good. So six iron that I managed to get, it was probably a good three quarter action to be fair, when I look it back on video, it flew just under 130 yards to finish at 150 without any real hand action in there at all. So it really felt like I was utilizing my big muscles, not my hands and arms. So that's a great exercise for you to start with. Now, how can we start to generate some real speed, some real power from that movement when it, we're not using so much flip with our hands and arms? So one exercise I'd get you to do, again with this ball, is just a simple throwing exercise. If I keep my elbows into my hips and I just work on rotation, that's gonna generate a little speed. So we can start off just throwing the ball that way, elbows into your hips and working on pure rotation to pure rotation, keeping my elbows into my hips. And I'm not gonna generate a lot of power from there, but I could hopefully be pretty accurate. The next stage is still elbows in, so it's body rotation here, still body rotation on the way through, but I'm gonna extend my arms. That's very different to this type of movement. If I come, so I'm facing the camera, it's very different to this type of movement where you see the blue part of this ball uh, climb over the yellow part, so a real forearm rotation this way. I'm gonna do it that movement, but instead of my elbows being in, I'm now going to extend my arms towards the target to generate some extra speed. So elbows into hips, body rotation to body rotation, but I'm gonna extend my arms. And I can generate more speed that way. So pure rotation with extension, fantastic. We've got even more power in there. The other part that we can use is using our wrist to lever correctly. So what I don't want is a lot of wrist hinge or forearm rotation. But what I'm quite happy to use is a wrist cock. And of course I've got to uncock my wrists at impact. So what I'm gonna try and do is the next exercise is just an L swing. So that is my lead arm to club shaft. 
to an L swing here, okay, or a reverse L swing. So it is now my trail arm and my club shaft. So I'm just gonna be trying to go L to L. So it's gonna feel more of a half movement. Of course, it's involving body rotation, but it has got wrist cock and I'm uncocking my wrists into impact. That is very different to a lot of forearm rotation or wrist hinge. So let me see if I can give that a go. Right, so again, still obviously got that six iron. I'm just gonna try and go L to L. Having the L on the way through means I have uncocked my wrist. Of course, what I don't want is this type of movement like a punch shot. I need to have uncocked and recocked my wrists on the way through. Very different to hinging that way. Let me give it a whirl. So let's cock the wrists and uncock the wrist. So again, you can see I've finished in a nice L shape on the way through. And again, I've managed to generate a lot of speed from there, 66 miles an hour. Um, I've flown the ball 120 odd yards to finish out there just before the 150 marker, still from more of a half movement. So probably a little bit shorter than the one I did with the impact ball. But the impact ball was trying to teach me rotation. I can generate speed with the rotation and extension. Of course, what we don't want is these arms finishing in here. So we are extending our arms while rotating our body and we can start to generate some speed as well by using our levers correctly and our wrists. If we can combine all of that, we can really start to generate some power. So it is body rotation on the way back and on the way through controlling the club. I'm extending my arms towards the target. I'm not in here, but I am also using the levers of the wrist correctly. So I'm using wrist cock and uncock. I'm not using so much forearm rotation and wrist hinge. Let me see if I can put all that together to get a little bit more distance out of this six iron. It felt really solid, apart from the fact it's going out right to target. Pretty good distance considering I I left the club face open, so flew 170 to finish 180. Club head speed 85 miles an hour. I think I can do better than that if I can hit you more of a draw or slightly straighter to ball flight there. There we go. That's more on the line. So really, it didn't change the distance too much. Flew 172. To finish out there about 185, 87 and a half miles an hour. I gained a couple there. But I hope that video has really helped you understand that we can generate power with body rotation. What we're trying to limit is forearm rotation wrist hinge. What we are using is rotation of our body, extension of our arms, and we're also using a lever of our wrists. They are cocking up and uncocking on the downswing. That is the cocking up, uncocking down, recocking on the way through. That is very different to this type of movement. Okay, that's a very different action and I can really start to control the club face from there, which is what we're trying to do ultimately, is control the club face, but generate some speed. I hope that video has helped. If it has, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel as well for all the other content every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And if I can help with any online lessons, please get in touch. There is uh, some info on my website and the address is just below. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon.